Welcome, this is um, an energy virtual meeting for September. I'll go through uh, a bit of introduction. So uh, reminding uh, goals of the IRTF. So the IRTF conducts research, it's not a standard development organization. And we act uh, as a forum for longer term research issues related to the internet. Uh, IRTF publish in promotional or experimental documents in the UFC series. Its primary goal is to promote development of research collaboration and teamwork in exploring research issues related to internet protocols, application, architecture, and technology. Uh, so this is really to distinguish from uh, IETF. Uh, still, we follow IETF policies uh, with respect to, for instance, patents, code of conduct, or privacy aspects. So uh, this is um, an extract of uh, the uh, IITF policies. Uh, and if you want to have more information, you have the different uh, uh, reference to documents available on this page. So please uh, be well informed of this uh, information. And uh, by agreeing to that, you will comply with the IITF policies. A quick heads up on um, how we proceed for the meeting. So the sessions uh, are being recorded. Uh, when you end up speaking, please keep uh, yourself muted to uh, allow for some uh, inconveniences and um, in the chat window please uh, type uh, rh if you want to uh, take the floor to um, uh, to make a comment and uh, the chairs will manage the queue okay please state your name and uh, be uh, concise and precise uh, for matter of time thank you uh, in the agenda that we sent on the list, but also here in the presentation and on the data tracker, you can find the useful links for, for these meetings, agenda, materials, the WebEx sessions. We are using a share notes uh, at the link and you can all participate to put uh, your names and notes, please. After the session, the WebEx recording will be uh, made available. Uh, usually it's on the IETF YouTube channel and that's it. So agenda, uh, this is point number one. I'll just have a follow-up slide with the uh, future meetings, but then we will start with technical discussion. Uh, agenda item number two is for status on the research challenges in AI for network management document. Uh, Jerome will give us uh, the status. Then agenda item number three, status on intent classification uh, by Olga. Uh, item number four, status on IBM concepts and definitions, Alex. So those two internet draft are research group documents. Uh, draft. And then agenda item number five, uh, we will have a discussion laid by Jefferson on the uh, IBM use cases we like to develop in the research group. Uh, and we will finally have agenda item number six, which is a uh, open discussion uh, slot to address uh, any updates or um, communication on the other IDs of the group. Also discuss a bit um, potential participation in the next IETF hackathon and uh, discussion on some uh, scouting topics we would like to uh, suggest for upcoming meetings. If this is okay for you, uh, we can go on with the agenda. Any things on proving the agenda? Okay, so if it's okay for you, we can just uh, we have a glimpse on the um, future meetings so nothing uh, really changes um, <clears throat> still open if we would like to have an online interim in october as we have uh, roughly monthly and emerging meetings but since we are heading towards the uh, ietf 109 uh, meeting uh, we will have to check if it's relevant to old one we will also consult on the mailing list for that um, we have um, applied for a two-hour session in the next uh, IETF 109 meeting, which will be fully online. Uh, we will have to address uh, several research group milestones by then, and also, as pointed out, uh, that we will discuss in this meeting, uh, participation to the virtual academy. The next, uh, I will say, big meeting should be also March 21, IETF 110. Um, currently, it's uh, should happen in Prague, but there are, I mean, the IETF LLC started consultation uh, with uh, the community if uh, it would be appropriate to move it to a fully online meeting. Uh, deadline for comments uh, is September 20th. And um, currently, uh, the majority of feedback received 
is suggesting to go for a fully online meeting. So uh, be aware that most probably the next IATF meeting in IATF 110 uh, will be online. And uh, as for the previous meetings, uh, the text in blue here in this slide, um, what will be the mode of operation for NMRG will be to continue with virtual meetings or on a per need basis, uh, use mailing lists for technical discussions and also collaborative platforms. Uh, we have a bit more activity now on the NMRG GitHub thanks to the, uh, the two um, research group documents. And we have also uh, Google Docs we use, for instance, for the AI research challenges document. Do not hesitate to share your questions or views on the future meetings or ideas for collaboration. And we are always open to that, uh, either directly to the groups or to the chairs. Any comments on uh, future meetings? If not, then I'll switch to agenda item number two uh, and uh, Jerome will give us an update on that. Jerome, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Laurent. Uh, yeah. So, um, it's uh, um, a demo date about the uh, research challenge document, uh, in, so research challenge in artificial intelligence for network management. Uh, so, there is no big update from uh, last uh, July where we present the last update in, uh, in the last ETF. Uh, uh, I don't know. Okay. So, so basically now we have a kind of a good set. Uh, I don't put here again all the different uh, challenges that have been identified, but we have uh, already a good set of uh, challenges uh, that uh, can be a bit uh, categorized or classified into different sets uh, based on the more related to uh, artificial intelligence itself, uh, more on the uh, uh, enabler for networks and things like that. So we have this list uh, that uh, of course you can consult in, in the document. Um, well, okay. So we, we already have this list. We we have other one here. It was a, a previous list. Sorry. Uh, we have some others, but uh, so 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 no. Basically, uh, so basically now the the next step. I think this is important. Are the next step now? So. The idea was to put the document as a as a draft uh, uh, for for the, the reasons the following reasons uh, the objective is to have kind of live document with some visibility. Of course, it does not mean that this document cannot be then transferred to white paper when when achieved. But of course, it can continue to evolve to different versions. But the uh, next step is basically now to put as a draft, and to, uh, of course, we will. Uh, uh, we will move to, uh, uh, to add that to the author that has been identified, keeping, of course, ma mailing lists aware of the advances. And uh, yeah, the idea would be to, to have the first uh, preliminary version to show at the next year. Yeah. Incomplete, but uh, already that we put a bit more structure into the document because currently it's mostly a list of challenges. Uh, I don't uh, don't have so much to say uh, about the document itself. Uh, just regarding next step, you have mostly. Uh, I know that I already promised you, and uh, I didn't do yet, is to organize this uh, uh, dedicated meeting to work on this document. Uh, and yeah, so I will do it the next. Uh, 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 now that the uh, let's say the uh, September uh, is, is is over, almost. So yes, that's it, that's it for me. So no big update. Uh, of course, if people want to still the, the document, of course, is open for our challenges. Then nothing is uh, closed. So uh, you can check and uh, add something if you want. And uh, but then you will move from uh, another uh, move to a draft uh, a draft format for uh, continuing to the document. And that's it uh, from my side, uh, Laurent. Thank you, Jérôme. So, any, any feedback, comments, or um, whatever you would like to address for this document? <coughs> Jerome, I, I have a question more for this um, 
objective to to switch i mean not to switch but at least to um, bring it to a draft uh, mm -hmm. i remember we discussed uh, several options either to i mean for in fact in the publication objective of this document um one is to publish it in a, a, i will say kind of journal or conference um and the draft it would be a kind of different uh, process because um, I mean uh, going into the RFC publication could be a bit uh, longer longer term outcome. Uh, how do you see this? Uh, I mean, for me, from my point of view, the two options are compatible, but I like to see a bit how you see things uh, going on for that. Okay, so my opinion, yeah, you say what you say is is. Uh... I agree with that, that there is a two option. Um, I don't think we will exclude the two option from if we take one or, or the other, as I said. So mostly the draft will be a tool to help us to advance and have some visibility in the document. Of course, I know that it can be long then to go for uh, RFC publication. Uh, to be honest, it might not be even a goal by itself, but uh, of course it will help us to a bit uh, uh, have some visibility for this topic in the group. Uh, and it does not prevent, of course, to to publish in a magazine or journal. Um, so usually it's quite accepted, of course, uh, because I mean, draft is not considered as a publication. So I mean, in terms of uh, plagiarism, you should be able to do so as well. Uh, of course, you may have some reviewers that say that it's already been, been published if you submit such a paper, but normally it's, it's okay because I mean, it's like when you publish in archi archive or something like that. So I think two options are compatible. It will really depend on the content we are able to produce. Um, so yeah, so for me, the draft first is mostly a tool to, to a bit more advanced on the topic. And then we see what will be the path for publication exactly. If we should choose both at the end of one. So I don't, I don't know if it's answer your question. Yeah, it was uh, to, to get a bit your view on um, how we will move forward with this. Yeah. Okay. Any other views before we switch to the next point? Okay. So just to repeat what Jerome mentioned that uh, this is a completely open. Um, uh, project and it, or document, uh, you have the link in the slide or you can uh, address the chairs for that. It's, uh, you can contribute uh, only also with just reviewing or providing comments. We have the, the share doc uh, usable so far. So if you have uh, interest in that topic, please uh, reach out to, to Jerome, myself, or uh, directly uh, by updating the document. Okay. So let's move to the uh, next item. Uh, that will be uh, Olga and, and her call for, for a status on intent classification. Uh, I assume, Olga, you will have uh, uh, some slides to show. I can give you the floor for that if you like. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to share now. So I will share my screen. Can you see my slide? Yes, very well. Yes. So I'll, I'll just present the status of the intent classification uh, draft today, and, and uh, the, these are the authors of the draft. So the draft, uh, just I'll, I'll give a brief intro for those, if there are some people who, who joined today who were not here before, but we discussed this draft uh, several times, uh, just to introduce the goals so that uh, we know what we are talking about. So the, the goal of this draft uh, is not to define the intent. The important thing is to say that uh, a concept, uh, we are aligned with the draft for the uh, IBM concepts definition, which would uh, define the core concepts like uh, what is intent and what are the differences with services and policies. Like the goal of our draft here is to bring clarity and in what those intents represent for different stakeholders, because uh, sometimes uh, in terms of the uh, uh, discussions about what intent is, you know, we can have a good dis the definition of intent and we can have a, 
uh, uh, good examples, but in, in some use cases and for different solutions, uh, different uh, stakeholders may have different kind of requirements from those uh, uh, from the intents and from the system and what intent what they want uh, uh, the system to provide for the intents. So therefore this draft is here to bring some clarity into what intent network intent represents for different stakeholders and we are doing that by means of uh, classifying uh, different types of intents into uh, dimension, dimensions, different solutions users and intent types. So uh, this classification would, going forward, ensure that we have a common understanding uh, uh, and it can be used to potentially identify the, uh, the scope and priorities for some POCs, research, open source projects, and individual projects that we have. Uh, we are proposing a taxonomy and the methodology, methodology used to generate the taxonomy, and uh, this methodology could be then also used to update this taxonomy by or, or create a new one by adding or removing different solutions for different POCs and open source projects. The important thing is to say that we want to be aligned uh, with the, the other draft that would be presented by Alex later, and uh, so that both gra uh, drafts could become the foundation for any intent related topics uh, and, and where we could use some common understanding about uh, what intents are, what uh, different types of intents mean, who are the intent users, etc. This is the link for the draft for those who don't have that link. Uh, so, uh, so, so the summary of the status really, uh, uh, the, we received a, a lot of the comments and uh, what we did is based on those comments, we did a class based on those comments, classification based on complexity uh, based on the sections, and we assigned all the comments to the co-authors, so to the to your editors. So we have now the list of uh, ownerships for all the comments, and we are doing uh, working uh, on those comments and addressing them as we go. So we also created the Git project uh, for the draft. Here is the link. Uh, we added the version zero, which was which is the version that is a research group draft. We added it to the Git, and we are we created version. Uh, one which is now currently being uh, worked on. Uh, all the comments, like we had uh, different complexity, zero, one, two, three, and all the comments of low complexity have been already addressed. Uh, and other uh, comments of complexity two and three are in uh, progress, and we are hoping to finish them and to submit version one in October. So this is some, this is the history of our draft. You can see here, sorry. Uh, you can see here that, uh, sorry, just put a pointer probably. You can see here that uh, in July uh, we had a draft adopted and up, uh, and then we have 38 comments now that we are addressing uh, and these are the authors, uh, comment authors. We have six different uh, comment authors and this is some statistics that we have. So these are the comments that have been uh, up completed. I, of course, I won't go through them, but just to say that we, we addressed 19 of them for the complexity one and zero. There is still one that is in progress and the uh, comment authors have been contacted. So, so please, uh, comment authors, if any one of you is uh, at the meeting, please uh, uh, review it and say and, and let us know if, if they are addressed uh, satisfactory. These are the, the then other comments that uh, we assigned to different quarters. So China Telecom has uh, uh, is looking at sections five and six, and some of those comments have been completed. Others would be done either in September or October. Uh, Professor Jefferson uh, is kind of looking at uh, uh, some comments in the section one, and he did kind of complete part of his comments, and uh, others are in progress. Uh, Pedro is uh, also looking at us. Uh, he, he has three comments to address and they're in progress and, and Huawei is looking at uh, additional comments mostly from Alex. Sorry, Alex will we'll contact you about these ones. We left them for uh, the end. So, so we, these are the progress, some of the co comments that we would be addressing uh, in next few weeks. So conclusion and next steps. Uh, so we do want to, uh, uh, we are working through Git, through different branches, uh, different authors are addressing different comments and we are merging it. We, all editors identified and, and uh, I think we are on, on our way to have a, 
uh, all comments addressed uh, uh, in, in, in October. Uh, so the next steps uh, is to uh, engage with comment authors and we started engagement with comment authors as needed and then to submit version one of the document. So that's our current status. Do you have any questions? Any questions from anybody? Any questions from the floor? I, I do have a, a few observations. Uh, first, thank you very much to the team for um, making this work. I mean, it, it, we had the first uh, version of the document, uh, first call for research group adoption, and then uh, you, you made the uh, address uh, the, the content of the work to make it successful in the second call for research group adoption. So thank you for that. I saw a lot of activity um, uh, in addressing the, the numerous comments received. So this is uh, good to see, uh, to see going on. And uh, so I'm looking forward to, to see the next version. Uh, and uh, do you expect to have it ready um, by end of October? I mean, for, for, for the next meeting or? Uh, uh, like, I don't, what was the date? We don't know the date for the October meeting. So that's, uh, you know. Uh, no, I, no, I mean, for, for the IETF cutoff. I mean, uh, was, beginning was, oh, okay. Beginning, uh, like, I don't think we would have it at the beginning. I think it would uh, take probably a few more weeks. So, uh, but I'll come back to you. Like, at the moment, uh, some of the comments would be addressed by the end of September, but for some, it looks like it may be uh, October timeframe. So we didn't get all the estimates for all of the comments yet. But uh, we, like the, I think the, the plan was maybe uh, closer to the third week of October. Or mm -hmm. end of October. Okay, very good. Sorry, could you remind me of the date? Okay. Uh, I think the I think the cutoff date for IATF one hundred nine is November second. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so our goal would be for November. Yeah, for cutoff date for November second, we would aim for that. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. But it all depends also on uh, on comment authors, uh, you know, accepting and and reviewing and uh, agreeing that uh, we address the comments accordingly. Thanks. Any other comments from uh, participants in the meeting? Okay, so if not, uh, thanks Olga and the team for uh, presenting us with the status. I think we will uh, maybe have more discussion when you publish the updated version addressing the comments, uh, especially through the mailing list and maybe in the um, in the next interim. Uh, it will be nice to, to, to really be able to follow up on the technical discussion because um, this document and the other one that Alex will present are, I think, our, our key first document from the research group on IBN and Will be nice to really have strong strong material there and i know the, that we your document received a lot of comments uh so really uh, i really expect to see the what we come next and that we can hopefully progress on, on both both documents uh, in, in an emergency with that okay so uh i continue with uh, the next point in the agenda it should be Alex um, to give us a status. Give, let me just get to the right. Yeah, status on uh, the other research group draft on IBN. So IBN concepts and definitions. So Alex, if you'd like to share, or you want me to share. Alex. Alex, yeah, can you speak, please? Uh, we cannot hear you for the moment. No, Alex, we cannot hear you. Or at least me, I cannot hear you. No, we cannot hear you. You are not muted in, uh, 
in WebEx, maybe you have a problem on the mute is from your laptop. Okay, so let's give Alex just a bit of time. Alex? Hello? Yeah, yeah. no, it's good. No, no, it's good. So you can hear me? Okay, very good. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, let me share. Okay. All right. Can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah, we see your okay, screen. Okay, there you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry about the hiccup. Your, your, so, video is on. your video is on. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so, so this is just a very brief status update, actually very fitting for, for on the other draft, as he has, as Olga mentioned, that the two are pretty much moving in tandem. Um, so this basically concerns the uh, update on intent-based networking concepts and definition. Um, on this one, uh, we just uh, recently, just a week ago or so, we, we posted a, a draft update, um, uh, basically with, with, yeah, with, 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 with a few updates. Uh, for one, basically, there was a, a longer set of comments that were received on the mailing list by Ali Rezaki. I'm not sure if he's uh, on here um, uh, today, did not uh, seem on the participants. Uh, but yeah, we, we addressed those comments. Um, in terms of the draft uh, itself, uh, um, basically, this is when we, we expanded Section 6. Section 6 is the one that defines the, the, the different uh, intent-based uh, networking functions. Uh, so, maybe we provided more details on each of those functions, and uh, this also entailed, uh, basically, earlier we had a longer list, we basically expanded some of this into new subsections for the intent fulfillment uh, and the intent assurance main, main categories. Um, we also uh, refined and sharpened the distinction from policy-based management, that is probably uh, important since this is a related uh, concept, um, so uh, hopefully this will be clearer now. Uh, we did add a few uh, intent examples. Um, we uh, also had earlier in the document a set of uh, open items for discussion. So this section is a little bit refactored and simply basically made into an additional considerations. And then we, then we had uh, various editorial uh, tightening, uh, little uh, editorial nits and improvements uh, and so forth uh, throughout. Um, so the this is just the document structure. It has just I'm just putting this uh, because it has slightly changed since since the uh, um, uh, since the last time. So basically, in the uh, intent fulfillment and intent assurance, we now have basically different uh, subsections. Um, so yeah, really, basically, the main things I guess to to discuss the next steps um, and where should we go from here. Uh, we do believe that the document is. Is reasonably stable now. I mean, although there have been a few changes uh, or a few updates to the draft, uh, nothing is really major or so. So therefore, actually, I, I think we're getting uh, into the into the phase where it will be good to assess uh, readiness for progression to go to the next steps. Um, so we believe all the current uh, comments and so forth have been addressed, and the question is basically how to how to push the document forward from here. Uh, so presumably, uh, well, this is maybe something that, uh, yeah, the, the chairs can can comment on. Uh, I know basically since we are in IRTF, we don't have a working group last call of, uh, of sorts, uh, but uh, I think maybe now would be the time where I think it would be good to solicit uh, last call style of reviews <laughs> of the document. Uh, after which this would be sub submitted to the IRSG review. Um, and then the question is also what the target dates would be. I think actually in the original uh, charter for this working group, uh, ITF 109 was mentioned as a target. I think actually this is doable uh, and uh, and realistic, but this is of course something that we would want to have the 
uh, we would like to ask the feedback from the working group uh, and from the chairs on. And that's all I have. Hello? Yeah. Okay, any comments right now for what Alex presented? Any questions? Okay. Um, just for a, a bit of a process overview, um, because I'm, I'm a co-author of this document, so I will not express, uh, I mean, oh. get involved as a chair, but I think Jerome uh, may um, give yeah. us a bit of uh, his yeah, views yeah, on, on sorry, how to, to move forward. I was speaking, but I was mute on my phone, not on the, on the application. I'm sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so, so for that, yes, as, uh, as as you say, that the idea now is to to assess if the uh, uh, if the draft is ready for IRG review, and so this will go through the, the uh, for requesting feedback from the NMRG participant in mailing list. So I think we share with you uh, the procedure and the checklist for doing so. So there are some steps uh, to, of course, to, to go through. And so the first one, yes, as I said, is uh, uh, to have a review of the document by the group. So mostly here, that should be go through the mailing list, uh, having feedback. And um, yeah, then it depends really on what, the, what really the feedback you receive because you were asking for the date. Um, at the time, it's, it's a bit hard to say because it will really depend on the feedback, of course. And the time you will need to address. Yeah, uh, thank you all for this. Uh, uh, for the, showing the, the page. And so, yeah, so basically, if you think as, as a, if all the other things are, are ready as a whole source, then you can go for the uh, feedback from the group. Of course, explicitly is saying that it is for IRG review. And uh, then we will, uh, we'll see based on feedback and we can, uh, we can also uh, see what will be the, the timeline then. Is, is that clear for you, Alex? And uh, I think for the, all the, the authors, uh, Laurent is also in the draft, so uh, authors are also in all those process. But yeah, first step is review by the group. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I think it is roughly clear. So yeah, and I think for here, uh, although actually right now the audio is not very clear, I have some issues on my system on the side. I I, I apologize. Um, uh, but I think basically, I guess for here, for the, today, the meeting is also the, just the, uh, also the request for everybody to, to, to please send comments on this, on this revision. Uh, so we are now in, uh, next year or two. So that basically for the, uh, it would be great if we could get comments, I don't know, say over the course of the next two weeks or so, which we can then, uh, from, from where we will then basically roll a new revision. Uh, updated with whatever comments we receive until then, and then I think we can perhaps de de decide based on the number and severity of comments <laughs> that we've received uh, to, to go to the next step. Does that, does that sound reasonable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's okay, like that, yes. Yeah, but I just would like to stress, uh, speaking a bit as, as a chair in, the, in this in this discussion, um, really that we are in IRSG, so I mean, really here, it's not really a last call or getting a, mm. a consensus on, 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 the, on the content. It's really to assess the uh, scientific quality. Uh, is the document complete also with respect to uh, the objective we gave it as the research group? Uh, in the idea of the work plan. So as you see in the, in the process of it, it's really to uh, review the document for editorial and technical quality. Uh, then there are a number of provisions to put in the document for IRTF, IRTF RFC um, to add that it is not an IRTF product, but also the level of support that this document uh, get and support and reviews that this document got uh, during the, the, the research group uh, reviews, because this will be very useful information when we go to the IRT review 
to highlight that um, is it very an individual position, an individual scientific position from a participant of the research group, or is it a wider community position? Um, and also to make sure that as we uh, propose this content to IRSG, but also after that to, to the entire community, uh, there is a good quality of what we provide. So this is why I think there is a, a responsibility in the research group to try to uh, take time to read the document, provide, uh, we already received a lot of previous, uh, reviews and comments, but still here, if we reach this milestone, provide uh, final comments in uh, in the quality of this document and if we have uh, managed to address the, the most important part that, uh, that was the mandate of this document. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is Jefferson speaking. Uh, I don't know if you are at this point, but uh, maybe the document uh, needs a uh, shepherd. Uh, and I'm saying this because I think that uh, in the past, this is something that uh, slows down the whole process. You know, to have someone that can, you know, can can assure the next steps for the for the, the draft. I think the shepherd should be me, right? I think it's uh, one of the co-chair, but as long as the uh, is a uh, co-author, it cannot be, of course. Okay, okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a good remark, uh, Jefferson. Uh, so now, also in RTF, there is document shepherd uh, assigned. Uh, most of the time, it's one of the research group chair. I cannot do that, as Jerome mentioned. Uh, from our informal discussion with Jerome, uh, so far, Jerome took this role. When we really, um, I mean, really enter this this discussion, this process, uh, we need to appoint officially the shepherd uh, in the data tracker. And as you say, the, there is a key role for the shepherd to to make sure that this progress uh, uh, as it should. I mean, to not be slowed down by some uh, blocking point or administrative things. Uh, what I've seen recently, I mean, in the last uh, couple of years or year that um, the process has been much more fluid uh, between the research group, the IRSG, IESG reviews also, conflict reviews. So uh, things are often to, to, to be a bit more quick. Um, nevertheless, uh, we, we know that it, it, it will take a bit of time to go through all this stuff. But uh, your remark is, is correct that the uh, shepherd has, has a key role uh, for, for the good progress of the document. Okay, thank you. Any other point on um, this document? Uh, I be an intent, concept, and definition. If not, thank you, Alex, for waking up early <laughs> from California to give us this uh, this update and. Uh, Looking forward uh, as for the document with Olga on the next step for, for this. So let's move on to Hello. the next agenda item. Let me bring, I think it should be uh, Jefferson with. Um, the IBM yep. use cases. Uh, Jefferson, do you want me to share or you, you have the slides you would like to share? Uh, I, can, I can share, let me see. Okay. Can you see the slides? Yep, it's good. Okay, so can you see my, can you see the slides? Yeah, it's full screen now. It's okay. Okay, okay, thank you. So this is a really quick presentation, and um, it's about the intent-based networking use cases. So I'm not going through this, but uh, of course, uh, intent-based networking is something which is very important in the concept of uh, an MRG. And there are different efforts in the ITF and RTF regarding uh, IBM. So, for example, I, I got a screen from, from the data tracker that are lots of uh, documents that 
at at some point they discuss some some parts or some uses of uh, intents regarding the IETF. So uh, the 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 idea is maybe to have some use cases on intents in order to define the validation scenario. Also, this uh, some concrete examples of using intents and uh, how to use intents. And I think that uh, uh, for the the last two uh, internet drafts that uh, were presented at this uh, meeting. Uh, they, 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 they need some kind of use cases in order to, to, to put some put more strong uh, views on concrete examples of intent. So uh, the goal of having some use cases to assess the quality and completeness of specifications and intent-based systems uh, functionalities in experimental sessions. So, and I'm bringing some, some ex best experience on this kind of use cases. So we have a use case on autonomic networking both at IETF uh, 90 and uh, at that point autonomic is, is something which was uh, was being, how can I say addressed by the, the several meetings uh, by the NMRG and uh, after this uh, use case box we have as a, as we know this leads to the lead to the 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 definition of the anima working group and also some docs, uh, some RFCs that, that came from uh, these use cases uh, both. So, and, and I'm not proposing to have IBM use cases both, but the fact is that when uh, we started to talk about having uh, some use cases on autonomic network, and then I think that maybe we can use this as some kind of a template for uh, use cases uh, of IBM, we discuss uh, a template for presenting these use cases, which can can uh, can show more. How can I say homogeneity when we're discussing when we were discussing uh, at that time? And uh, in regarding the, the the use case for autonomous networking, the template. Uh, uh, some problem statement. After that, they presented uh, user and administration experience, parameters, information, interaction with other device. So we started to to write down uh, some internet drafts that uh, have this at least in order to to to, to present a more uh, concise view of uh, of use case for autonomous networking at that point. So the question is. Maybe we can use this experience from uh, autonomics in intent-based networking uh, at this point, and uh, maybe we can we can think of this as uh, some some kickoff for the for the items of an IBM use case, um, and maybe we can start to think of uh, an ID that uh, can uh, bring out this use case that we know that they are. Uh, in the IETF together, or maybe we can just several documents to discussing in these different uh, documents. So I, I'm not sure, and then I'm I'm putting this on on, on the on the to the research group uh, as a way how we can uh, proceed with uh, describe the use case for IBM. So there are some some use some potential IBM use cases that were already identified. So and I'm putting three of these, and the, the first one is from Luis Contreras and uh, Panagiotis Domesticas, uh, which is transport slice intense, and this is in in the the context of 5G EU project. Uh, also, there is uh, the work from Sabini Handriamazi, uh, which is uh, regarding 5G. Intended based 5G IoT network slice, and also uh, there is a work from Amina Bodendir, uh, which is network slicing life cycle automation. And I'm not claiming that is that it, these are just the, the only ones that uh, at this point are are uh, can be considered as use case for IBM, but uh, also is something that we can we can use the group to bring more ideas, more potential use cases in order to, to, to try to provide a more holistic view 
on on IBM use cases. And uh, my, 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 this is my final slide, and this is a call to arms. Uh, so the question is, who is willing to contribute on on defining use cases uh, for IBM? Uh, maybe we can think of uh, invite people that uh, uh, have uh, other I intent ideas in different working groups or research groups to present at NMRG meetings. Maybe this is something that we can can form in order to to bring more people uh, to to contribute on that. And the, the, the last question is how can we move this conversation forward? Um, maybe in the main list or in having I don't know maybe in the past uh, the NMRG uh, had some some specific meetings for for autonomics and also for IBM. So you can start can you can think of something like that or or just discussion or having different presentations at our meetings. So this is a question on how, which, which is the best way to, to move forward with the use case for IBM. And that's it. Thanks, Jefferson. Um, I'd like to ask a bit to the participants here, a bit what, what they see, what's the view for, for from, from them. Um, because, I mean, we have an IBM work plan, we have some uh, proposal for use cases uh, as draft or not as draft, um, but there is also, I would say, some, um, it could be uh, challenging to, to, to develop use cases. And uh, so what we try to do uh, with Jefferson, Jerome and Pedro is try to support this, this work on use cases so that we can get a bit of um, concrete examples of uh, application of uh, intent and intent-based networking and also to, to, so that this work in itself is valuable but also that through this uh, bottom-up and more um, pragmatic approach of, of IBM we can also uh, use this activity for more the architectural um, work on, on IBM that we were well, planning to have in, uh, in an energy so my question a bit to the group and to the participants here is um, what would you see to be a bit the approach we could take to, to support, to, to make this, uh, this work on IBM use cases uh, deliver in, in, in an energy? Um, should we agree on a, on a kind of template to, to be able to compare things? What are the type of information we would like to see uh, in, in a use case document on IBM? Um, so a bit of your feedback about um, ideas and opinions, what would be the right way to progress with this thing. Uh, Luis, I see you at your raising hand. Thank you, Roland. Yes, I, I think that the, what has been proposed by Jefferson is, is a, probably a very a good uh, way to follow. So in, in my particular case, I apart from the the draft that uh, has been commented by Jefferson, I also moving forward another one about interconnection. And um, both of them are potentially different, I mean, different in, in into the realization of the intent. So probably having this kind of template would be useful to, uh, to understand the different dynamics uh, farther than the, than the intent itself. So I think that it could be a potential interesting way to follow. And, and I basically, I, I think I, I will try to discuss with my co-authors to, to go in that, dire in that direction and um, maybe we can exercise in these two documents if this approach is valid or if, if, he, yeah, he, if it is, is a, actually a good way to, to move forward with that. So at least for, I will try to do the exercise for the two that I'm working on. Thanks, Luis. Other, other views on um, this use case activity? A question I have uh, is whether um, um, you see because we, we have some documents already uh, internet draft that are on the use case uh, would it be I saw that maybe in other research group for instance they bring several use cases together in a single document so that it's uh, more um, uh, 
not comprehensive, but at least altogether, it's sometimes easier to see a bit the differences, uh, the, the use case consideration are, um, uh, I would say, are discussed together through this document. Is it a possible way that we have we keep these individual use cases so that this is more the, the solution to to the use case problem, and that we can maybe have a kind of collective or a collection of use case use cases documents that will more address the comparison of them and and maybe uh, uh, lessons learned or what we want to take out of these use cases for for the design of the um, IBM architecture. Again, what's a bit your views on that? I'm really open, but just uh, raising the point. Luis, thank you, Laura. In my view, probably at, at this stage, I think that would be better to to keep the the use cases separately in in different documents. The the reason why I think in this way is because the the expertise, I mean, the implications farther than the intent are very specific for for different uh, topics. No, and I think in in the two that I have mentioned before, the transport slicing and the interconnection. So probably it would be easier to, to work separately, maybe defining these common parts and, and maybe potentially later on to try to, to merge over the use cases once we have a, a common structure, I guess. This would be my, my view, but uh, for sure, uh, it's only my, my view. Hi, uh, Jefferson speaking. Uh, I agree, Luis, I think that at, at this point, maybe we can, uh, the best approach is to to have the, the use case separately by by the, the documents, and uh, but uh, what we can do in a document in a holistic document right now is to have this the description of the templates. So maybe we can we can work on a document which is some kind of uh, let me say how the the template itself and uh, the authors of other uh, ideas can other use ideas. this information. So, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Probably would be a a good way to follow. Yes, to to have a common understanding in such a way the the yeah. different use cases can yeah. take the, that uh, reference as well as the as what you mentioned in your presentation. So being sure that we align with the other two uh, documents from the from NMRG. So I, I I think it's a very good idea. Okay, thank you. I, uh, sorry, I raised hand as well. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, should we also uh, look at the overall scope? And and uh, because if use cases would be used for the architecture going forward, uh, do we need to start with uh, identifying what scope we are interested in, in terms of types of solutions, type of actors that we are looking at? Maybe even uh, from taxonomy kind of uh, and say whether we are interested in everything because I've seen you didn't have, for example, example of data center or, or campus or, you know, are we looking at carriers only? Are we looking at uh, what type of, uh, what, what scope are we considering? Olga, I think that this is something that we can also address in a, in a document. Try to, to discuss using the document uh, in the NMRG which is the scope that you are interested in. So maybe this is something that we can also uh, use the documents to, to discuss. Yeah, so maybe what we can do from, from our draft potentially, because if there are some yeah. categories there, we can say that, that this is the scope that we would look at and, and do the subset of that scope or, or the whole or everything. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, uh, we discussed already in the past and that um, I, I will see also a connection to, to the internet classification draft. Uh, remember the discussion we had on these uh, tables that, that this could be a tool to um, uh, position a bit elements of the use cases with what has been defined as a criteria in the uh, classification. So this can be a, a mapping exercise, not necessarily inside the internet classification document, but at least as a tool for the for the research group. Um, as for the scope, um, for me, I'm, I'm really in between two, two, two positions. Um, first, I really would like to encourage anyone willing to uh, work on use cases to bring them to the research group. I really see values in um, getting into some pragmatic approaches for um, 
how IBM networks would work. So I like to really keep it as open as possible. Uh, but I also understand a bit your question that um, if I mean it, if the scope is very wide or very heterogeneous, then it, it, it will be a bit challenging uh, when we want to reach uh, identify common uh, functionalities or um, commonalities between the use cases. This will be uh, more difficult or more challenging. But today, I think we have uh, a few examples of nice use cases. Uh, in, in previous discussion, we also indicated uh, typical, I will say, categories or areas where we will see uh, it would be interesting to develop use cases, but it really depends if we will have contributors willing to um, document that. Um, so you see, I, I'm a bit between two that I like to encourage diversity, uh, but on this on the other side, I know that at the end, maybe it will be a bit more challenging too. Yeah, definitely. So we can reduce the scope initially and then maybe going forward, iteratively increase. Yeah, I, I think it's it's important to, to discuss the scope because uh, regarding the NMRG charter, I think it's pretty wide. So maybe it's challenging to, to address this in a document. So maybe at, at first we can we can discuss along with, with a, a, a potential template, uh, which you, which is scope we are interested in. So uh, I agree with you. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, for, for this kind of um, supporting document uh, describing uh, typical uh, parts that you would like to see in the use case document, I, I would really be really interested that we discuss uh, not necessarily, I would say, just a format because okay, this is just a format, but more what kind of outcome we expect to see from the use case. Okay, so the use case could be what they are, but um, if we can agree on or describe what we think will be important um, uh, to be provided by the use case, is it, um, I don't know, um, to be able to pinpoint to certain functionality or to have um, more evaluations uh, that can help us to understand if some functionality are feasible or what are the limitations of such uh, some approaches beyond the purely, I will say, scope of the use case that is to solve uh, a specific problem. I think we, we have also to discuss a bit um, how to put some sections, some uh, uh, expectations of, of what will be, what needs to be delivered by, by the, uh, the different use cases without being too constraining on, um, again, what, what I think the use case should be a, a bit self-contained and, and should live by themselves. Any other views or comments on this? No? Okay. So Thank you, Jefferson, for bringing this um, presentation on the use case support for, for the research group. Uh, let me check what we have next uh, in the agenda. So we've gone through the uh, item number five for IBM use cases. Uh, next one is a bit is a slot for open discussion. Uh, so I, I will leave the floor. I don't know exactly who from the room um, is uh, here, but um, we have a point for other ideas. I don't know, for instance, Luis or any others uh, here, if you would like to make a quick um, announcement or whatever on, on your ID, or if not, uh, I mean, we can move on. Just checking a bit what's the status for the other active work, individual draft. Or No, from my side. Thank you.
okay so uh, another point of discussion is the um, iatf uh, hackathon um, so just a, a quick uh, summary we um, started to participate for energy in the iatf 108 hackathon week which was uh, a first uh, virtual hackathon organized uh, mid of july uh, there was uh, several research participants that take uh, that take part in the hackathon uh, for a few different topics and especially we had uh, a good feedback from uh, from those participants uh, especially the team from um, from walter uh, and, and and all his colleagues um, about the interest of this uh, of this activity so we are raising again this question now if we want to uh, make a kind of follow-up uh, for for the next ietf and um, especially uh, what will be the nature of, of these activities? Because um, uh, it's a kind of collective um, approach for, for the IATF hackathon. We can, uh, it could really be at the team of individual teams of participants um, without necessarily uh, making it uh, connected with energy. So it really depends uh, at which granularity we want to do that. And also the timing. I mean, uh, we did that for IATF 108 because initially, should have happened uh, face to face, and we wanted to um, to be able to bring people uh, locally to Madrid. Even if it was virtually organized, um, we managed to make it uh, useful for for the participants. Here, the question is whether we want to keep this IATF meetings hackathon as um, kind of milestones to plan some uh, collaboration work, or if it would be more relevant uh, to not necessarily track uh, this uh, this milestone and have um each of the teams to to plan their work as they see fit so really it's here to, to open the floor to discussion about um is it useful should we make it at an energy level or advertise it as an energy activities and uh, also uh if we want to for i mean go for itf on uh, on a nine or if we just want to make it our uh, our own reason Any views or um, feedback on what we should do for next hackathon? Okay, that's good. Let's move on. Um, the next point we had in this open session is uh, okay. I put scooting. Uh, it's in fact to um, we have already a lot of. Uh, good topics in our agenda, but from time to time, also through interactions in uh, conferences or meetings or uh, with different participants, uh, we, we touch some uh, interesting uh, topics or research questions, or we, we spot some maybe uh, emerging technologies that trigger some thoughts. So an idea will be that from time to time, uh, we, we allocate uh, meeting time, especially uh, in uh, Collocated with the IATF meetings uh, to bring um, to the discussion uh, those kind of uh, more prospective topics and see if uh, the, the question is interesting, or who are a bit the, uh, the interest of the research group, who could be uh, interested to participate, and just has a, a bit of um, an exploration. And in that sense, uh, so first, the first question I or that we, Jerome and I, we have towards you is if you will be interesting to, to, to try such an experiment, uh, maybe for the next IATF uh, and energy meeting, or if uh, you think we have enough and we should only concentrate on uh, our current topic. And secondly, is um, we, we thought about one topic, uh, but it was discussed a year ago, something like this, uh, triggered by a comment by, uh, by Diaz on uh, what I call now residu residual configurations. And uh, a, a bit the way I'm phrasing this is um, you, you could have some configuration installed in different uh, devices in uh, operator networks, uh, but sometimes you don't know exactly what those uh, configurations are for. Either because maybe the personnel has changed or maybe 
there have been some updates or the configuration has been left uh, due to some uh, uh, misoperation, etc. So, and you don't know if you can touch them. Maybe it will create some um, issues in the operation of the network. Uh, you cannot not always trace back to what it refer. Uh, so, it, it may be a bit difficult, not in, not in all cases, but sometimes it may be a bit tricky to know what to do with these kind of uh, things that are here, but you don't know what, what you can do about that. Um, so, we had this uh, comment. We didn't, I mean, it was a bit of an exchange on the mailing list, a few, a few emails. But then, um, a bit more recently, I've been uh, seeing some uh, some papers about things that are a bit linked to that um, in uh, in NSDI or other conferences about uh, checking configurations or misconfigurations without uh, knowing where they came from, and and so making a bit of testing uh, on that and trying to find patterns, etc. So I was wondering um, if this topic of residu residual configuration could be something we can uh, uh, bring to the floor of, uh, of an upcoming NMRG meeting and try to frame it first, have some presentation on the, the context, uh, what could be the research questions, actually what the problem is, and then see, then investigate, discuss among us uh, what could be interesting um, potential solution to that. Um, so this is up for you also to, to comment on this, what you think about this approach of uh, exploring new topics and uh, this proposal on the residual configuration. Can you still hear me? I'm talking in the to space or what? I, are you proposing to kind of uh, try to figure out what intents, original intents were, or what are the kind of non-consistent uh, configuration in the network? Uh, currently, I don't have any specific, um, let me say, uh, constraints. I'm, I'm really, uh, we had this example given by Dean. Uh, I saw some papers, some research, proposal that we're going a bit into the same aspect. Um, I see a connection potentially to the IBM um, topic because in, in IBM we are defining this single source of proof. So yeah. uh, it, we should be able to, to come back to trace back to this uh, initial intent and, and check the configuration. Yeah. I can see also a link maybe to some uh, interesting cases to use uh, AI techniques in order to identify patterns or maybe to try to quantify a potential impact of removing some um, some configuration in, in different devices in terms of scope or uh, yeah, area of impact, etc. So for me, it's it's a bit open. Uh, and my 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 idea in this proposal is first, uh, is it a, an interesting question? And then to try to frame a bit what, what would be inside this, this problem. Uh, so th this is the initial proposition. I think uh, you can look at it from two perspectives. You know, you can look at it from intent perspective, and then you can look at it from network configuration perspective. And in both cases, potentially, there is a interesting research to be done. But in, in one case, for the intent, driven, uh, you have to kind of somehow present all of those configuration as a, uh, in fact, do the classification of intents and generation of intents potentially from the network. In another case, you may uh, do uh, use some AI ML potentially to find a misconfiguration and look at it more from the network, wide network configuration perspective and not so, so much from intent perspective. But I do believe that in our group, it's more interesting to look from intent perspective. So the, uh, this is Dan Bogdanovich. Um, on, on that topic is that the configuration is ephemeral. And um, it can be, when, when you translate the intent to a 
Actually, when you use an intent, I prefer to use provisioning information. When you use the intent to provision a service into a network, you create a state. And then you, you, you try to keep that state according to the intent that was defined by the operator or customer or whoever was the, uh, who, who was the requester of the uh, intent to be um, put, translated into the network. The whole idea there is that, uh, that you can always delete once the in intent is removed for whatever reason, that you delete the whole provision, you remove the whole provisioning information except the basic management uh, information from the network devices. That everything what is related by, uh, by the provisioning, the configuration is pretty much fixed and it's persistent, but everything else is ephemeral and uh, you can, something goes wrong on the device, you delete and you create based on, you know, based on the overall uh, information, what you have and the last known state, you will reprovision that device if there was a failure on the device. If it was a failure of a service, you just delete the whole service and you reprovision the whole service across all, all of the devices or across all of the network. So the, uh, the idea there is that um, the provisioning information, once you realize it's wrong, you can delete it, override it, and uh, um, uh, redo everything from start. Sorry, maybe I didn't understand then uh, the, the use case, but I was my understanding was that you were uh, considering uh, without the provisioning going into the already provisioned network uh, where the user may be manually provisioned it or using some non-intent provisioning systems and then that we could figure out misconfigurations or problems. Yeah, so that's, that is one problem that we have seen in practice for a long time when you have differences between the uh, automated provisioning systems and manual that are being done by the operator. And from my experience with the operators, they would, um, so they, that manual, what was done was usually done for debugging purposes. And then um, they would literally uh, delete that because uh, their system of record is the automated system and they were trying to go, they always try to reconcile with the system of record. So he, here the main here the main question is what is your system of record and you have to reconcile the network with your system of record. And by trying to put everything in this case if you have a manual uh, if if you have a manual intervention do that manual intervention through the system of record on the device. Because in that case, everything here is treated as ephemeral and can be deleted at any point. Yeah, uh, the, 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 um, do you know if uh, there are, it's just kind of, Good engineering practices or good good designs, or if there are a bit more. I mean, it's um, it starts to have also technical specification or um, best practices type of documentation to say we'd like to guide a bit more this. I mean, to to uh, yeah. to, to describe what could be the key elements and uh, the, the typical uh, processes or procedures to follow in order to make sure that you don't get into um, Problematic cases. Okay. Yeah. So the, the the main the main thing what I've seen from several operators that are um, in, in that are advanced in that area, they decide what is their system of record, and they then reconcile everything with that system of record. 
everything what is not there is treated as ephemeral and can be deleted. And they are, with more automation, they are reduced configuration that resides on the device after a reboot. And they're saying this is how it will come to a basic state. So uh, some, of, some of the operators are more, more advanced. Some of them are uh, uh, doing things as, they're still doing the things in the old ways, but the more advanced are saying, it's I, I will decide was it was it how can I get my basic how can I get my basic operational network up and running and after that I'm treating all the information as ephemeral. One of the goals for RESTConf originally was to create ephemeral uh, ephemeral overlays on the network that were used to deploy services. Then Rescov added as well the uh, uh, persistent state and uh, the have changed from the uh, original intention. And to research uh, that, especially what could be interesting is with the network slicing and do, being either soft network slicing or hard network slicing is the I have a you can you can then view network in multiple layers what is my foundational network and then how I'm building services on top of that network and then how I'm treating the services on top of my foundational or primordial network and this is where you're seeing what what belongs in my foundational and what everything and overlay that should be completely treated as an ephemeral. And this is one side where we could also working in and looking to research what would be minimum set for the network to be functional to start uh, hosting other overlays on top of that and uh, uh, how to and then uh, how to um, yeah, so I'm I'm to see what what could be a like a main problems that we are seeing with some of the mm -hmm. operators in that case when they're doing the foundational part and what are considered overlays and uh, yeah, so th th there are some there are some issues. Uh, when you're booting up device, and then there are some trust there. Uh, so there are some trust issues there. I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, working out of my own uh, memory because I did not put uh, down. I sent you an email order mm -hmm. back, so I, I didn't uh, 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 prepare for it. But I'm, I, I would be happy to prepare uh, for this month or in the next month of two, uh, like a starting document and, and trying to summarize what we are seeing and then seeing there is interest in the group to uh, continue working on that. Yeah, I think this is a bit the approach. Uh, it's really to um, discuss informally uh, if such topics could be of interest and try to collect views or interesting participants. As you say, maybe put together on a short document a kind of problem statement and, and key questions. And then our idea with Sean was also maybe in a, one of the IATF meetings to invite two or three speakers as I say, to frame the topic, maybe give uh, uh, maybe someone from academia to give us a bit uh, from the angle of techniques, uh, what could uh, fit into this um, to, to these problems. And then we can discuss openly in the research group, is it, do we want to go further? Is it more a problem for IETF? Then maybe transfer that to them, or is it really some interesting questions that we would like to investigate further in energy? But at least uh, agree on the topic and see in in one meeting uh gather the, the right information to 
Is it a good research question for energy? I can tell you that from the ITF perspective, it would be a little bit early to pass it to them. It requires some more definition because in my experience dealing on that topic with uh, several uh, network operators, uh, there are many questions open the equipment side uh, to uh, also uh, them uh, uh, how to operate. Um, so they they are looking how to use ZTP for certain things, but then there are some between ZTP and Oni. Um, there, I'm 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 just starting now at the very basic when they're just starting up their foundational network to build it up, bring it to a state. Uh, how to bring it to a state that the devices can among themselves that you have your network that you have your management network your internal management network up and running in a uh, in a secure way so there are some things that are worth researching before passing it uh, to the itf uh, to solve the uh, technical uh, uh, the mm -hmm. okay so uh, we, I think we will get in touch. I mean, um, I, I saw your email and I think we will trigger a, a bit more interactions to try to see if we have the everything we need to make it as a, a good discussion for, for the next uh, meeting in IETF. And uh, yes, let's exchange on that. Are, are there views from, from the participants in this meeting? Do you think it's interesting to have this scouting and this residu residual configuration? Is it something you think is of interest? Could you just maybe send an email with some description so that maybe I did, didn't understand it when you were describing? So if you could please uh, maybe just do some description of that, that would be helpful. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We we could uh, draft something. I think I, I, maybe Jerome and I we can draft uh, a bit the, uh, the general idea, and I think Dian can maybe uh, um, follow up with uh, a bit what his experience in, in the field for that. Okay. I, I can um, I can also send you a graphical representation of what I'm seeing the operators are working on. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Let's let's uh, try to to follow up on that. Thanks for for the good comments. Um, at, we reached the end of the agenda of the points that we agreed to discuss, but we still have uh, some time. We can finish earlier, which will be good for energy for once uh, but we can also open the floor to maybe some uh, other topics or comments you would like to raise now anything else you would like to discuss before we close the meeting jerome anything else from your side uh, as co chair no that, that's fine for my side now Okay, so I'd like to thank you for attending the meeting. Uh, thanks for the presenters on the different updates and this uh, final discussion on uh, new topics. Have a good uh, rest of the day and um, we post some information. If we will organize a next interim uh, in October, we, we still have to see if it's relevant or not. And our, as I said, we already have a plan for the next session in IATF 109. So until there. Uh, stay safe and uh, healthy. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.